Personally, I don't think that uncertainty is a concept that's difficult for people to understand. Life is uncertain, and we all know that, and we all go through life making decisions without knowing everything that we'd like to know. The example of somebody who is on the job market and has um, three different job offers, how do they decide which is the best job for them? So they know some information about each job, each location, but there's no way they're going to know everything. So a good example of uncertainty regarding climate change um, is the trajectory of emissions of greenhouse gases. And we know that greenhouse gases are heat-trapping gases, uh, mainly responsible for the increased warming that we'll see with climate change. The problem with figuring out what the emissions will be, let's say 50 years from now, is that in order to do that, we have to be able to predict basically how the entire world is going to develop 50 years from now. And that's very, very difficult to do. So what one tends to do with uncertainties that are very hard to even quantify is you come up with scenarios. So there may be, what if we continue to produce emissions as we are now? What if we managed to reduce emissions in the developed countries by 50%, which really kind of give you the opportunity to think about what kind of world do we really want to live in. Weather forecasts also include some uncertainty, but generally the uncertainties are much smaller uh, than we see in long-term climate. Weather forecasts can also be verified, meaning that weather models can make a prediction for tomorrow's weather, let's say, how close was the forecast to what really happened. Verification is um, a great strength of weather forecasts. Even so, um, weather forecasts can be importantly inaccurate. For example, the large snowstorm that occurred in the Northeast U.S. in February 2015 there was a prediction and a lot of preparation for a very large, as a matter of fact, storm of the century type size for New York. And it proved to be, in reality, um, the storm was shifted a bit further east. And so there wasn't this huge amount of snow. It was very interesting to me that no mention of the uncertainty was made. It was presented as an absolute sure thing. And that's, that's an interesting thing about what are the advantages and disadvantages of including uncertainty. I suspect that they didn't include the uncertainty because they were concerned that if they presented it as being uncertain, people would not take it as seriously. When it comes to climate change, there is a particular situation um, where the uncertainties are really focused on because those uncertainties have been used somewhat as a political football. But it's not the case that we don't know enough, because as I stated earlier, we'll never know everything about most things that we have to make decisions about. The point is that do we know enough to act? So citizens who are well informed regarding science can more fully and responsively participate in an advanced democracy. And personally, I think it would be great in order for citizens to be better informed. I think it would be great if newscasts had a segment on science with the same level of importance as they give to sports each night. And the likelihood of that happening is...